Today, I think it is very clear that we face a more connected, contested, and complex world where uncertainty and volatility seem to be the new norm. Some go so far as to say that we need a new culture of preparedness. We need a tailor-made approach for each of our neighbor, respecting, and this is maybe an additional element we have introduced, our own interests and match it with the interests of our neighbors. There is a European mindset which needs to transition um, um, from what it prehistorically or historically has been, and that means embracing many more realities which are happening globally. The mega trend is increasing connectivity of infrastructure and communications in particular. So that presents enormous opportunities to access in an ever more frictionless way high growth markets. So Europe's proximity to Asia is going to become much more intense in the coming decades as a result of this connectivity. By 2030, I truly believe that Europe and Asia will be one large continental integrated commercial space. You need to understand the political economy of the different components of the Arab world, whether it's the Maghreb region, whether it's Egypt and the Nile Valley, whether it's the Levant or the Eastern Mediterranean, and what's happening in the Gulf. And I drew attention to two stories in specific, Algeria and Saudi Arabia. Their future is of immense importance. What we're seeing is a world that's more uncertain, which might be less stable, but it's also more connected and possibly more creative. And so the, the possibilities of that is that you could have not just the fact that there's more systemic risks, but also that there's more systemic solutions. But those solutions are not all one size fits all. They're diverse solutions that are somehow connected, but move the agenda forward because people do things differently, but with a common aim in mind. The one trend that we need to pay the most attention to is technology, how it's disrupting the economy, how it's affecting society, how it's changing the way people relate to each other and relate to their sources of income. Um, if the trends that we're seeing with populism, with inequality continue, then we are going to see increasing instability over the next decade. That is not just technology by itself acting in an exogenous way. What we have is technology that's interacting with so many other trends, with societies, with economics, with governments and how they operate, with the motivations and ideologies of political parties. And I think it is that interaction, right, that nexus between technology and all the existing areas of our lives that will actually produce the really interesting trends. The gulf between developing and developed countries is likely to grow um, um, and that will have repercussions for Europe, not only in terms of perhaps more migration, but also in terms of seeing more ungoverned spaces at our southern periphery. If we want to be a respected player in Beijing, in Moscow, in Washington and elsewhere, uh, building defense forces is necessary but not sufficient. Thinking about foreign policy decision making is the one important thing that needs to be addressed. 2030, of course, we will have, uh, towards that period, a continuation of a technology-enabled criminal space, especially on the Internet. And if we don't understand better the framework for how the Internet can be better regulated so that we have the right kind of uh, standards uh, in, in, in cyberspace, then I think we're going to have a much greater impact on our daily lives than even that we have now. have we uh, come along in terms of uh, really helping the people around us? Well, I've already met someone from 2030, it's my son. I'd be asking them what the most uh, commonly used language in the world is. Is it English or is it code? Which of the things from today have a long half-life and which of the things will actually be rapidly forgettable? If I could meet someone from 2030 I would ask them if they forgave us for whatever it is we're doing now. Is democracy dead? What, what form of democracy do we have or do you have now? And 
Have we destroyed our planet entirely? Have we managed to make it totally uninhabitable? Are we exploring potentially other habitats? Answer from the moon. Yeah. <laughs>